And I bet 95% of you watching this video will not do what Zhao has decided to do, and that is backpacking. Now, backpacking is very difficult for some, and most of you will not do it because it's out of the norm and out of the ordinary. Most of us are, you know, you go, you take a flight, you stay at a hotel whenever you are traveling, but it takes somebody very unique and very special to do what he has done, and that is to travel to different countries, not only to countries where he speaks the language, but to countries where he doesn't speak the language. So he is Portuguese, but he is currently living and working, actually, in Lebanon. Why backpacking? He's about to get married, then the engagement and the relationship, just everything fell apart. Um, I wasn't too happy with my job. Uh, I was working for a university, office job, nine to five, you know. I had my hobbies and, you know, uh, things that I could do outside work, but um, it was ev everything was very, very tame, very, uh, very stable. And nothing wrong with that, by the way. Uh, I mean, if you're happy with a, a lifestyle like that, why not? You know? But I, I, f I felt like something was really missing. And so I decided to set a goal, which was to just take a sabbatical leave for one year and hit the roads, just me, my backpack and my camera and just travel no agenda no specific route i was kind of concerned about that i mean because uh, okay so you take one year off and then what then you go back to your old job uh, i'd heard stories of people who just could not cope uh going back to the same job but then they couldn't find a way to sustain themselves on the road so they were kind of in this um this dilemma this conundrum uh i'd heard about people who went backpacking and after a month they went back because they just couldn't cope with the backpacking lifestyle uh, which has its you know its its hurdles it was just the right moment when i heard what i what i did which was uh, elizabeth gilbert uh, the, the lady who wrote uh, eat pray love and uh, and basically what she said was forget about following your passion for a moment because uh, if, if, you, if you have a passion, you're probably already following it. But if you don't know what your passion is, then it, this can be very frustrating. Uh, something in, in, the, in these lines. And so what she said was, instead, just follow your curiosity. Because uh, you can be passionate every now and then. The passion is also fire, so it burns and it disappears and you know, it comes back eventually. But curiosity, you know, there's, there's always something uh, that makes us curious every day. I wanted to sacrifice budget and uh, comfort and invest more on time because time would enable me to uh, really uh, establish meaningful connections with the people that I would meet on the way um, and also develop my photography skills, my documentary and storytelling photography skills. Lebanon took my photography to the next level because I was always out, I was always shooting, always learning. And then I ended up in a neighborhood called Khandak El Hamid. Uh, I took some pictures of that neighborhood, which is a bit of a problematic neighborhood in, in Lebanon, in Beirut. Uh, I never did anything with those photos, but I put them on my website. And then last year, so three years later, I got contacted by Lorient Le Jour, which is a, a, a daily publication here in, uh, in Beirut. And they told me, uh, we would like to publish your photos of Khandak El Hamik, because we, we Googled them and we found your pictures. Fast forward, I missed my plane in January to Iran and thought, okay, I'll just go for three weeks to Lebanon. Landed in, in Beirut and the next day I went to Lorient Le Jour and they said, look, if you're going to stay here for a while, we would like to have you as our photographer to collaborate with us. And the rest is history. The, the bottom line is, uh, if you have a little seed in your in your mind saying, maybe you should go there, you know, maybe you should do something, listen to that because that that could lead you to phenomenal things. The day I woke up in Tripoli around five o'clock in the morning, uh, so I went with a journalist uh, from Lorient Le Jour uh, to cover a piece on. Uh, rose water uh, from the moment uh, the farmers extract the, the petals from from the flowers uh, to the moment they start uh, doing the, the trading and then eventually it ends up in the hands of, uh, of one particular person who uh, lives in uh, Anfe 
uh, by the coast and he actually manufactures from his own house uh, rose water. I mean, the, everything is really beautiful, really uh, colorful, uh, but it was a very long day. <laughs>